Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I'm your host, Eric Smith, and today I'm talking about Aliens Bug Hunt, edited by Jonathan Mayberry. This is from Titan Books, and it is an anthology of, uh, I'll just read it right off the top of the book, All New Tales from the Expanded Alien Universe. Uh, now this is a tough review. Um, not even sure uh, the order to do all of this stuff in so uh, right off the bat I'll just say there are some good stories uh, in this anthology uh, and that statement there should sort of give you an idea of the tone of this review um, there are good stories in here uh, but uh, I guess I'll get back to that later um th there are a lot of problems with this book and uh, there there are some little things that normally i wouldn't uh mention i'd let it slide but when it starts to add up and then add it to some of the bigger things uh it just i've got to talk about it now um first of all uh, yeah, cool. You got a xenomorph on the cover. Aliens Bug Hunt. This is actually supposed to be an anthology of stories about the colonial marines. Uh, and if you read the back, it will tell you that. Um, but here's one of those first little mistakes. It says on the back, when the marines set out after their deadliest prey, the xenomorphs it's what Corporal Hicks calls a bug hunt. Kill or be killed. Here are 15 all new stories of such close encounters written by many of today's most extraordinary authors. Uh, so first, right off the bat, there are 18 stories in here, not 15. Um, which, you could look at that as a good thing. You get three extra stories. Three more than you were expecting, so that's cool. Um, set during the events of the first four aliens, alien films, sending the Marines to alien worlds to derelict space settlements and into the nests of the universe's most dangerous monsters these adventures are guaranteed to send the blood racing one way or another uh so on the back it doesn't tell you not all of these stories feature xenomorphs i would say less than half uh well let's see i said 18 uh, definitely less than half i don't think there's nine stories that feature xenomorphs uh, but if you read the introduction it does tell you that um, it, it does, uh, it, it's about fighting monstrous aliens or vicious aliens or deadly aliens, not just xenomorphs. Uh, but you got to get to the introduction to find out that it's not all xenomorph stories. Um, and even though it's supposed to be about colonial marines, there's at least one that's barely has colonial marines in it. Um, so it's, uh, that's, this might be nitpicking, but it's these little things they're adding up. Uh, there are a lot of missing words and misspelled words, typos, whatever you want to call them in some of the stories. And again, something I would generally ignore, except it adds up. And it's just one or two words missing here and there with an exception. And I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, and then there's a story where Ripley is Ridley. Fine, it's a typo. Although that, to me, is kind of a big one since you're talking about Ripley. You think someone would have noticed that it said Ridley. Um, and then there's, I think there's a spot where it says trunk when it should say truck. But again, little things. The biggest problem, um, as far as these, these little things go, in one of the stories, and I believe it is, I want to say it's Dark Mother. Yes. All right. Dark Mother is the story of Burke from Aliens. Uh, and it actually takes place within the movie Aliens. Um, it tells us what actually happened to that character. Now, first of all, there are two spots in this story where there are story notes. I don't know, I assume they're from uh, editor or copy editor, I don't know who put them in there, but in the middle of the story there are story notes, which is a bad thing. Um, 
it yeah you're you're reading along and all of a sudden there's just stuff from an editor or from somebody uh, basically notes to the writer okay so that's bad then there apparently is a piece of the story missing I don't know how much I don't think it's a lot but <sighs> All right, we're going to get a little spoilery here. Um, Burke is uh, in a in a nest, in a hive, whatever. He's stuck up on the wall. There's a they put an egg in front of him, and he's trapped. He's covered in that stuff, the resin, whatever it is. He's trying to break free. He gets one hand loose, and it describes him trying to crack the resin, trying to get loose, and he, he drops his arm down because he's exhausted. He's not making a crack in the resin, and in the very next sentence, he's free with hand grenades chasing after Ripley. So... That's a, it, it messes with your head, first of all, um, but there's obviously something missing there. There's, I have no idea how he got free. Um, so, as far as uh, problems with the production of this book, that's the biggest one. Dark Mother, you've got production notes or story notes, whatever you call them, in the story itself, and there's a piece of the story missing. So that's a big problem, um, and I don't know if I don't know if they rushed this book to get it out before Alien Covenant hit theaters. But it's 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 a it's a sloppy product, um, and uh, so I, I think I've got most of that stuff out of the way. It's just it, it's it's really disappointing. There are a lot of great authors in here, and I haven't even talked about that. Uh, so I'm just going to name some. You've got Dan Abnett. I love that guy. Uh, you've got Brian Keene, one of my favorite authors ever. You've got Ray Garten, Jonathan Mayberry, James A. Moore, Weston Oaks, Yvonne Navarro, uh, Scott Sigler, Heather Graham, all sorts of great authors. I haven't named all of them. And as I said, the stories aren't necessarily... Uh, there are some good stories. Uh, Brian Keene's story... Um, I really dig it. It's it's very dark. Uh, it's it's a Brian Keene story. <laughs> a lot of dark no stuff going on in there, and it's quick. Um, and uh, Larry, I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name. I always just pronounce it Korea. Korea. Uh, he's uh, known for Monster, Monster Hunters Inc. books. I think uh, I don't know if he's done some military science fiction or horror. The Monster Hunters Inc. kind of military. He does a, his story is, I believe, I'm just going to take a quick look here at the table of contents to double check. Yes, his story is told as an episode of a TV show about weapons, and it's about the pulse rifle that the Colonial Marines use. And that's a really clever, well-told story. I really liked that one. Um, there's a story called Broken by Rachel Kane, which is about uh, the early days of Bishop. Uh, so that's interesting to see uh, what he was like before the movie Aliens. Uh, then, and again, the other stories, I mean, they're not poorly written stories necessarily, uh, except for these little problems, but again, I think that's more of a production problem. Um, uh, but then uh, there's there's a lot of repetitiveness to the way these stories are and there are exceptions but there really are quite a few that are basically this the same thing um, they're different enough because they have different types of creatures again since they're not all xenomorphs but it, it does get a bit repetitive um, uh, there's a story with Hicks from before Aliens that does give us some character development for for Hicks but in the other stories that use characters from the movies uh, and there are 
two or three or four. Um, the, and it's the problem you have with a lot of media tie-in stories that, uh, that take place, especially pre the events we've seen. These stories are pre-aliens. Uh, we you lose some of the tension because you know these characters aren't going to die and the problem with the stories here is they don't add anything to the characters which is what you need if we know the characters are going to live then you need to give the characters more depth tell us something we don't really know about them and the few stories in here um, with the exception perhaps of the one that focuses on Hicks which is uh, reclamation. Um, the other ones that feature characters from aliens uh, don't really add anything to those characters. And you know, and if you're reading a story like this, and you have, let's say, you have a small group of colonial marines, where say there's five of them, um, and three of them are characters we know live because they're going to be in the movies, then you pretty much know the other two are the ones that are going to die. Uh, so again, you lose a lot of tension that way. Um, so, I mean, using characters th that already exist, I think, is a drawback in this particular case. Um, and that does remind me of one of the other stories that's got a, another a continuity error in it. One character has a wounded hand, um, but then later in the story, uh, it says that it's a different character. Um, again, production problems. Then uh, you've got uh, Christopher Golden. One of my, f I love this guy. I love most of most everything I've read by him. There's a few things didn't throw me, but I'm a huge fan of Christopher Golden. His story has one of the dumbest endings that I have ever read. Uh, not going to go into it. If you want to know, we'll talk. We can talk about it in the comments. But it literally, I read the story. I got to the end, and I literally in my head, I was like, wait, what? Are you kidding me? It. You want? I, I've heard people. I have not seen Prometheus or Alien Covenant. One of the complaints I've heard uh, about Prometheus, especially, is that the characters do dumb things. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but I have heard that 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 people have a problem because the characters do dumb things. The end of Christopher Golden's story, the characters, possibly the dumbest characters in any story I've ever that's not that's an exaggeration I'm sure there's plenty of dumb characters and stuff I've read but these guys do the dumbest there it's just ridiculously stupid um, which is it's it's not a bad story up to that point it is one of those that kind of is like all the rest um, I said you know there's a whole bunch that are just kind of the same and this is this is like that actually it and it also has characters from aliens so you know they're not going to die but uh i think that's one um but yeah horrible ending absolutely just a ridiculously stupid ending um and personally i think he could have had he could have kept the tone of the ending without having this really horribly stupid thing that happens at the end. He could have just tweaked it, kept the tone, but not it oh, it's it's just dumb. It's really the characters are so stupid at the end of this story. Um so yeah, um oh, uh Dangerous Prey, Dangerous Prey by Scott Sigler. I really enjoy this one. It's uh uh, I don't know if this would be considered a spoiler or not. You're going to get it within the first page. It is a story told from the perspective of xenomorphs. And it's really, to me, it's a very interesting story. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not the xenomorphs aren't talking or anything. Uh, they're not that anthropomorphized, if that's the, way to, the best way to put it. Um, so it's I, I thought that was a really interesting story. I like to see it kind of get into the headspace of the animals, the creatures. Um, so that was pretty good. And, and as I said, not <coughs> excuse me, not all horrible stories. There are some really good stories in here. There are some 
basically just sort of average stories. A, a lot of them, again, the fact that they're colonial marine stories or the fact that they take place within the alien universe doesn't mean anything. Um, it, they could have been any group of space explorers or space soldiers in any universe, essentially. Um, so, real, man, it's this book. It was a whole back and forth as I was reading it. Um, so, the rating I give this, and this, I think I'm being generous. I think I'm really being generous here, personally. Um, because it just, it's, again, I, I don't know if they rushed this, but it's a, it's a bad product from, from that state. It's badly, poorly produced from that standpoint. And then, and maybe that's, it's not my place to say or to review that, because I'm supposed to be reviewing the stories, but I can't just let, this is so poorly produced, I can't let it slide. I have to mention it. So, I think I'm being generous here when I give this two and a half out of five E.T. the Extraterrestrials. And I went with E.T. because, again, it's a bunch of different aliens, um, and... E.T. is not aggressive, but hey, they could have popped up in one of these stories, and it wouldn't have necessarily made a difference. Uh, plus, I've never drawn a crappy rendition of E.T. before. So, and he's an alien, and it's an alien book. So, two and a half out of five, and I do think that's being generous. Um, it's a few kind of outstanding stories, a lot of generic stories, horrible problems with the production of this book um so yeah it's man it's i i if you're an aliens completist i guess you're gonna pick it up anyway uh let's see it's 17 bucks so it's probably cheaper on amazon uh i don't i'm trying to decide if the few really outstanding stories are worth your 17 bucks. Or if you want a book that's just a weird, poorly put together product um, for your your collection of oddities. So I, I man, I, I'm not sure that I can recommend this. I mean, I don't know if any of these stories are ever going to be available anywhere else. The Brian Keene story is definitely worth reading. Um, the uh, Larry Cor Correa Korea, however you say his name, that's a good story that's worth reading. Um, yeah, well, just two and a half out of five. Maybe I should just leave it at that. So that is Aliens Bug Hunt. I will have links to it in the description down below. Uh, if you decide you want to pick it up or maybe look at other reviews on Amazon or what have you. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put them in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Uh, we'll just post spoiler warnings. So if you want to know what it is I thought was so horrible about the end of the Christopher Golden story, uh, just ask me in the comments. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what the problem with that is. Um, and I can tell you some of the other things. But, um, yeah, so comments, open for spoilers. Please like, share, and subscribe. And that's it. This has been the Low Budget Review Show. I have been Eric Smith. And until next time, read more books.